Hi, uh, I'm here today at uh, Kitsap Memorial State Park in, uh, in Kitsap County, Washington. And it's on the shore of Hood Canal, which if you're not from this area, it's actually not really a canal. It's a deep water field that was carved out by, um, by the glaciers, and it is a major arm of Puget Sound. And by extension, then, it's also part of the sailors' too. And this is a really good habitat for sea-run cutthroat trout. It's fairly deep, but it's shallow in shore. Um, there are streams up and down the canal that uh, the trout can use for, uh, for spawning. And uh, when they do spawn, they actually only spend a short time in fresh water. Uh, then they come out and they will spend most of their lives actually foraging on the beach where there's uh, much deeper food source. Right now it's pretty cold. Uh, it's about 36 degrees today. Um, and behind me to the east there's a big bluff that runs along the whole beach. Um, and that is going to shade the sun, which is good in one way because it keeps, it keeps the, uh, the water, near shore water pretty shaded and the fish like that. Um, so they keep feeding. Uh, the downside is I think it's going to be really cold. Uh, but I'm all dressed up. I've got my gloves on and my, my big woolly hat. So uh, you should be okay. Uh, I've got a uh, nine foot six weight um, rod. This is a Scott A2. And uh, I have a, a Reddington Behemoth reel on there. And that's a pretty inexpensive reel. Uh, I have much more tasty reels than this, but um, this is what I favor for this beach because it's full of barnacles and rocks and no matter how careful you are, you, know, you have to put this down, it's going to get scratched up and it works just fine. Uh, you pretty never, pretty well never have to get these fish on the reel, you're mostly stripping them in. So, so long as you've got a halfway functional drag, it's going to work just fine. Uh, I've got um, Rio outbound short, this is a uh, full intermediate line which I like very much and uh, on that I've got a homemade leader so uh, I use uh, fluorocarbon and I've got 12 pound 6 feet of 12 pound fluorocarbon with a perfection loop in the top tied directly to my fly line and then uh, somewhere in there there's a there's a triple surgeon's knot there it is, and, and that um, and that takes me down to uh, eight pound fluorocarbon, three feet. So all in all, I've got a nine foot a nine foot leader, and uh, and I attach my fly um, with uh, with a little loop knot, a non-slip loop knot, which keeps it uh, keeps the action. So the flies I'm going to be using today, uh, I'm going to start off with uh, with these. These are uh, these are Delia conehead squids. Fantastic pattern. Got lots of confidence in those, and and that's going to be my default fly in the winter and fall. Then I've got uh, I've got some squimp in there, uh, and then I have some. Uh, some wingless crazy charlies there in, uh, in pink and chartreuse and if none of those work on the other side I have uh, I have some silly shrimp here uh, chartreuse ones and some orange and then uh, this is a cool little fly I've, I've got a video on how to tie this this is the marmot bay squid that's pretty good and then uh, I have some Knudsen spiders back here. So if you've seen my videos, you'll know that I really like fishing surface patterns. So um, I've I've brought a bunch of topwater flies with me. So I've got um, some Miyawaki beach poppers there, uh, and I've got my own tiger squid. I've got some uh, I've got some mini gurglers, and I also have some uh, some sea, sea run sliders here but I don't expect to be using those um, if I do I brought my uh, my trusty lamps and light speed and that's got a floating line on it but I really want to stay away from the top water flies uh, now as you can see there isn't very much beach today um, 
here in the Pacific Northwest during the daytime uh, the tide exchanges are small so at night um, right now the difference between high and low tide is about 12 feet so here the tide is going out right now but it's only going to drop about four feet um, and it's going to get low at about uh, three hours from now so my favorite time to fish this beach is is actually on the outgoing tide and then it's still pretty good in the low and then for an hour or so after the low tide on this beach there are very few features it's pretty much the same the whole length of it um, there are no like uh, structures or points or anything like that um, that might hold fish more than any other place so what I tend to do is to move around um, and uh, just fish in different places until you know until I catch I'm not expecting to catch a whole load of fish today maybe one or two would be great if I catch three or four that's an outstanding day so uh, let's get started Okay, well that was uh, that was about my third cast, I think, and uh, I literally was just retrieving the fly, and it, it just jumped at it. You see all the sea lice on it; it's gonna it's gonna lose all those um, when it gets into fresh water. The barbless hook has already come out. I just measure that against my rod. That's about um, that's about a 12 inch fish. I release it very gently. He goes. So I'll talk a little bit about this line while I'm fishing. Um, it is, as I said, it's a full intermediate line and it's got a 30 foot head. So like the first 15 feet are transparent, just clear. Then there's like 15 feet of smoke gray, and then the rest of it is this blue color. So um, basically you know that you've got uh, the rod properly loaded when that 30 foot of head is just outside of the tip of your rod. So you just feed a little bit in until you see that blue right at the tip of the rod and, uh, and you know you're good to go. And the reason that I use fluorocarbon leaders instead of a tapered nylon leader, um, well, I do use the tapered leaders if I'm fishing topwater flies because I want a nice presentation. But the presentation isn't as important when you're, uh, you know, you're going subsurface. I mean, this isn't a little trout stream, it's, it's the ocean. Uh, so if it, if it lands in a bit of a heap, uh, that's not too much of a problem because I know that within one or two strips I'm going to be uh, in touch with the fly and the fluorocarbon sinks better than nylon it is 
less visible to the fish than nylon monofilament and uh, you know you don't really want that big heavy butt section which tends to which tends to float uh, you don't want that to um, impede them as a fish I'll finish that thought later This isn't a big one. This little guy is still netting. Calm him down. And again, the hook has just come out and he's gone. Very cool. Still on the subject of lines, which I was talking about just before uh, I caught that little fish. Um, the other similar line that Rio makes is called the Coastal Quick Shooter. And uh, I think a lot of people that fish for sea run cutthroat use that line as well. So I've tried it and in my hands I, I just don't like it at all. It just tends to tangle up a lot and I spend more time kind of undoing the tangles than we do actually fishing. So I can't really recommend that one. We've got a little tangle there, so no lines are immune to it, but this one's generally pretty good. I've just moved to the other end of the beach and from here I can see in the distance the Hood Canal Bridge, which connects the Kitsap Peninsula to the Olympic Peninsula and uh, that kind of marks it's real close to the northern end of Hood Canal. Another fish. Pump one. Hook is out. I'd say that's a good that's a good ten inch fish. Let's get you in there. There you So this uh, Delia squid, the conehead squid, is just such an excellent fly. It's very simple to tie and it is just so effective. Um, I did once meet Jeffrey Delia, the guy who invented it, um, and it was at this very beach. Uh, it was in the parking lot and he told me that um, he will not wade on this beach anymore. He considers it too treacherous. 
he does have a point. The objective hazard here is that most of the uh, rocks that compose the beach are kind of baseball sized, or softball sized, but interspersed amongst them are these very big and irregular boulders. And it's uh, just a, you know, they're everywhere, these boulders. And uh, if you're fishing and you're not paying any attention, and, and you're moving, and your toe contacts one of those, uh, one of those boulders, uh, you're kind of unprepared for that sudden check to your forward momentum, and it is really easy just to pitch forward. And I have nearly come a cropper many times here. So it used to be that if I saw a fish, say, you know, 100 feet away, uh, I would move towards it. And uh, the tendency is to keep casting and fishing as you're moving towards the fish. Well, I don't do that anymore. If I'm fishing, I concentrate 100% on, on the fishing. And if I'm moving in the water, that's all I do. I just concentrate on moving. And, uh, and not falling and tripping. Oh. Fish on. Feels like a real small one. You all count though. this one. That is actually a, uh, that's an immature coho. Whoops. Come on buddy. Yeah, that's a little coho. So one thing I do usually like about fishing this time of year is that um, the weed, which can be a plague during the summer, has generally disappeared. But today there's a, a lot of um, dead uh, eelgrass floating around. I mean, it is just everywhere. So, so that is a tiny bit annoying. It's uh, 11 o'clock now, so we're about half an hour from uh, low tide, and I don't know if you can see that, but the sun is just about peeking uh, out over the top of the trees up on that bluff. So we're still in shadow, but um, we will get some sun very soon, and uh, I definitely need to feel some warmth. It is very cold here. My uh, my hands are very cold, even though I've got the gloves on. And for me, if I can't feel the line properly, uh, that's basically a showstopper for me. Oh yeah, fish on. This one feels like it might be a bit bigger. That's what it might be.
There we go. Oh, yeah, it's a nice one. You can see that. Well, the noontime bell is ringing there in the background and the sun is fully on the water and this weed continues to be a bit of a problem uh, as far as presenting a fly goes and I am still cold and I'm getting hungry so I'm gonna call this session I think after this cast So yeah, it's been about uh, three and a half hours. Um, I said at the beginning, I think if I got two fish, I'd be happy, and I ended up getting five. Uh, so that can't be bad. Um, I really enjoyed myself, uh, and uh, I hope you know if you're thinking of uh, taking up fishing for these particular fish yourself, that maybe uh, I was able to give you a couple of pointers. So uh, all the best. Take care.